morning. I had something else I was supposed to wear, but then I got cold. I said, I get to put on a three-piece, but I sweat. So yeah, I'm looking forward to today, because today is a good day. Yeah. Now, the thing is that I need to say is, because you know me being me, we know that this is, excuse me, the last Sunday in the month of February, which we only have two days left in the Black History Month. Now, understand me and understand what I'm saying. We're going to get there in a minute, but I had no intention on doing a Black History Month sermon at all lesson. And since I've been here, I have not. And I had reasons why I have not. But someone asked me a question. You know how on Facebook, we, they, um, they have this little picture where somebody says, this day in Black History. Sister so-and-so Jenkins, Jenkins said this, and it's laughter and it's funny, but I had an uh, uh, older, lighter-skinned lady ask me uh, something about uh, one of the pictures. She says, oh, I didn't know that he was the first person to do this. And I'm thinking, it's a joke. But they didn't know that. So they took that as being true, as what Sister Jenkins was the first to do uh, Oh, it was something, whatever, it was funny, but they're not knowing our culture, it really wouldn't be funny to someone else. They took it as serious. So I personally do not like, nor do I subscribe to Black History Month. If you go with me, you'll understand why. And hopefully we'll come to the conclusion as to why I have a problem with Black History Month. Because here's what it seems to be. On the outskirts, it looks good, but in essence, it's still a way of pacifying folk so they can have something so they can say they have it. But I'm going to show you why I have an issue with it. Black History Month is supposed to show accomplishments of uh, history of black people who have done great things growing up from our history. But understanding when I say something controversial like I just did, there's a method behind the next. So here's what I want you to do, because I'm going to set you up. I'm telling you now that it's a setup, so you'll understand. George Washington Carver, we've heard that name before, right? So do we even have to say what he's done? We know it has something to do with peanuts, but understand, he is who he is. He was born January 1964. A gentleman by the name of James West was born in February. He invented a smaller, more expensive, more inexpensive microphone. Used to be microphones were huge and no one could afford them. But he created a microphone that can be used in almost every single telephone that you have right now. The tape recorders, you remember how we used to tape the tape recorders? Our camcorders, baby monitors, hearing aids, and even our microphones we have here. So this young man created basically the smallest microphone that we can actually afford. He was born in February. Then we have Garrett August Morgan. He's a senior. He was born in March 4th, 1877. Does anybody remember who he is? He's the one that invented the traffic light. Oh, y'all, but so we stop. <laughs> Understand that he invented it, but he also invented the gas masks. He was the founder of making the gas masks for all our military folks who didn't know. But in the same month, March, there's a gentleman by the name of Jack Johnson. Anybody remember him? Yes. Thank you. One person. But born in March 31st. He's the reason why I remember him because he's born on my son's birthday. But he was um, a boxer that was the one that uh, did the world championship, beat everyone that even walked in his place. But does anyone else know what he was also known for? He invented something that we use every single day, and it's called a wrench. He created the wrench. But here's the bad part about the wrench. It's even though the wrench was necessary, the wrench is something they needed, but because it was a black man who made it, well, guess what they called the wrench? That's where we get the word monkey wrench from. So we have to understand, sometimes we make statements when you say, one monkey don't stop the show. That's what it's referred to. In the month of April, there's a gentleman by the name of Henry Sampson. Uh, he was the person who invented what? Come on, everyone in this should know that. Who, matter of fact, who left this? Last week, someone left their cell phone. Samsung? Yeah, Samsung. Oh, I guess you must have one. But the point is, 
The gentleman by the name of Henry Sampson invented the cell phone. Y'all didn't know that one of us made the cell phone. Now, it might have been that big one, you know, back in the day, you know, it was a brick. But he invented it, and that's where all our cell phones come from. But then think about it, the microphone in the cell phone came from someone else that was a black man. In the month of May, May 2nd, 1844, a gentleman by the name of Elijah McCoy, you, you wouldn't know this person's name unless you're one of those people that nerd like me that would know this, but he was the person that into, he introduced the, what's called the lubricating cup. And all it was was a, uh, a way of automatically letting oil drip on the trains as they were going down. Because what happened was the trains would have to stop after a period of time to keep the wheels and the things, whatever it is, it, shoo, shoo, whatever the things is, <laughs> to keep going. So they would have to stop and put oil. If you ever remember some of my old cowboy pictures, the guy would get out there and put oil on. Well, he invented something to prevent that from doing it. Now, because he was so good at doing it, trains, the people that they didn't fall behind them, it kept the trains always on time. So there were people who didn't like that a black man invented it. So what they started doing is they started creating something similar to what he did. But they found out that their apparatuses were inferior and it didn't work as well. So then what they want to do is they said, I want what we use the phrase now, the real McCoy. That's where we get the word the real McCoy because what he invented, no one could duplicate. So when the people go use it, they say, no, no, we want to get it from Mr. McCoy. We want the real McCoy. So some phrases we get, we never realize where we got it from. The month of June 3rd, 1904, a gentleman by the name of Charles Drew uh, was the first person who created uh, the how to store blood plasma. How to the, the blood plasma used in transfusions. So if anyone has ever had some surgery and needs a blood transfusion, we can thank this gentleman because he's the reason why many people have been saved to this day. He organized the first uh, blood, blood bank in the United States. People didn't have that either. The month of July, a gentleman by the name of George Crumb, July 15, 1824, he in invented one of the greatest snacks in the entire world. The potato chip. So yeah, when we eat it, friend that just can't eat one, we blame it on him. In August, it was a gentleman born in August 4th, 1961. Does that name sound? That number sound familiar. August 4th, 1961. My brother was born in August 4th, but not in 1961. A gentleman by the name of Barack Hussein Obama II was born. So we have a, the 44th president of the United States from 2009 to 2017. The month of September, we have a gentleman by the name of Lewis Howard Latterman. He invented, or the way he would say is, one person invented the light bulb, but it only lasted for a few seconds. A gentleman by the name of Lewis Howard Latterman, it's a reason why the light continues to, to, to stay as well as long as it does. He invented the how to make the light bulb last longer. Beyond a few seconds. So when we turn it on now and the light stays on, you can, uh, two things you can afford that to. First, you pay the light bill so it stays on. But then second, to this man who made it where it stays on. The month of October, a gentleman by the name of Lonnie George Johnson from Mobile, Alabama, created something that people still use today. Y'all ain't about to know that now. The super soaker. The little um, the water gun thing that you see, he created it. And then someone tried to say that they did it first. But the problem was, uh, they knew that he made it, he had a patent on it, so you know he's a millionaire now because people who stole it all had to pay him royalties. Mm -hmm. So now he's sitting back, I think he's still in mobile, sitting there living pretty because of what he created. The month of November, Patricia Bath, November 4th, 1942 is when she was born, African male female doctor who received a patent and invented an instrument that's vital in what people call today cataract surgery. She created something that, so, in other words, without this, me being out here is going to throw the military. Never knew this. The instrument that you use to help with the implants, the limbs and stuff, was she created it. Mm -hmm. So now, every person that opens up a cataract surgery, cataract, cataract <laughs> surgery thing, is using a product that she made. The mother December, Madam C.J. Walker. Please tell me y'all know what she invented. Mm -hmm. What? Hair yeah. products. That's why I got these waves now. You used to have ripples, but now I got waves. <laughs> now, remember I told you I had a problem with Black History Month. Right. Now, what I want you to see is now, notice there was a, um, what I call this, a, a system of 
um, pattern that I just used. Anybody contend with the pattern that I just used in describing all these people? Every single month, there was somebody black who's important to our history. Now, with that being said, so that means every single month, now there's just 13 people that I named. There's several hundred people, but there's 13 people per different month from January to December that has created something that has to do that they are black who now has a history. And because of the history, we have used it. So my question is, or what my problem is, black history is not condensed to one month. And then on top of that, you get one of the coldest months and the shortest month too. We never realized we only got 28 days. So what I'm saying is, I don't have a problem with black history. I just have a problem with black history month. Because I'm my president, 2009 to 2000, what was it, 16? Was he the president of every month or just in February? That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm not knocking because that's what they gave us. Right. Basically, to appease you, here's a lollipop or what's that thing you get in baby? I'm glad y'all didn't say baby because you can get the pen taken off. But pass it by. You had to be there yesterday to understand. Oh. So, because of that, it, in my mind, it's like we are being appeased, but every month is a black month. There are products that are being used every day. Because I guarantee, you, except on Saturdays and Sunday, there's cataract surgery being done. So, what I want us to understand is that black history is every month. I understand that they want to do that. Now, let me throw this out there. The month of September and October is Hispanic month. Get an S? <laughs> September and October. How come we got... Okay, we'll move on. Just want you to go look that up. Google it if you don't believe it. The point is, once again, we have been we have allowed society to dictate what's important and what's not important. When you can celebrate it and when you can't celebrate it. And then on top of that, if it's Black History Month, how can we have any Black History people in the month of February so we have a day off? Just something to think about. Okay, I'm glad somebody got it. So I'm saying, if anything, if it's our month, can we get one? Okay. And because of it, we have to see that only mention 13 people to prove a point, especially the wrench. I know I used the wrench because my light bulb thing and my uh, thing was went out, and I used it and I thought about it. I said, wow, how many people use the wrench today that still mad because they got a mother? So I refuse to succumb and submit to one month being Black History Month. Right. Now, I said all that because you know there's a method behind what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. But at least we got a month. That's what some people might say. But the problem with that, if you're still saying in your mind, at least we got a month, you missed everything that I said. Mm -hmm. Because someone's still saying, well, we at least got a month. No, we got every month. But you just have to understand that this is something that people do all the time. They reduce things to one day or one thing. Matter of fact, let me, let me give it to you scripturally. Or we'll say, Bible or religiously. Um, Psalms 118.24. We know that, uh, that David said, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And we assume it's what day he's talking about. It says the Lord's Day. So today we're talking about Sunday. Because everybody wants to get up there. Brother Jackson used to say that all the time. And he was talking about Sunday. Now here's the beauty of it. I get that, but if we go from Genesis 1st chapter to Genesis 2nd chapter, I'll do it this way. Genesis 1st chapter, verses 1 through 5, day 1, Sunday. Genesis 2nd chapter, 1st chapter, I'm sorry, verses 6 through 8, day 2, Monday. Genesis 1st chapter, verses 9 through 13, day 3, Tuesday. Genesis 14 chapter, verses 19, 14 through 19, day 4, Wednesday. Genesis, first chapter, verses 20 through 23. Day 5, Thursday. Genesis, first chapter, 24 through 31. Day 6, Friday. Genesis, second chapter, verses 1 through 3. Day 7, Saturday. <laughs> now, from those passages, we can find out and know that the Bible said that God created. So we know God created all those days. So which day 
in the Lord's day, then we should rejoice and be glad in it. But that ain't going to lose you. We talk about Sunday being the Lord's day. So what I'm saying is, it's we do this by accident, and we do it to God. God, this is your day. He's like, hold on, bro, hold on. Uh, I created all those days. Why are you just giving me one day? See, what I'm saying is, I want you to know that we do it subconsciously the same thing. Now, do you think God is talking about, yeah, I'm just, oh, well, Captain's going to take that day? No. <laughs> we shouldn't either. It's fine to have that month, but we should be celebrating Black History every month. So, again, to accept Black History Month, <coughs> it's good because it gives you an opportunity to talk about Black History. But I'm going to show you something about Black History <coughs> that's important to Black History. If we just talk about black history in the month of February, what do we talk about in the other 11 months? Just something to think about. Because what I'm saying is, I understand, but I want you to think about it. Do you not tell your children about black history from March to January again? If we don't remind our children about their history, except for once a year, they will soon forget the significance of our black history. They will not understand the struggles or the sacrifices or even the victories that were created through our black history. In other words, it's people won't appreciate something if they don't know where they came from. In our generation now, they just, just take things for granted. Something simple as drinking from a water fountain. I remember Seeing a sign mm -hmm. that you couldn't drink. It was dirty, broke down, nasty, and there was one that was over here. And I remember my granny, we were out walking somewhere, and she said, babe, you can't drink from that. And I remember asking why. And I remember getting hit in the mouth. That's what I remember. Because I, remember, I probably said something, I probably kept asking why. But I remember her hand as it just came down, and it hit me. And I'm saying, that's why I didn't like drinking water for years. <laughs> because I was so scared of water would get but looking back on it is because she was trying to save me. Because there was a day when you couldn't drink from this particular water fountain. There was days when you couldn't go to the restaurant through the front door. So what I'm saying is, if you don't allow your children to know this, they will never, they take for granted now what people struggle to do. So, and the way things are going right now, the question can be asked, will our next generation even know about our black history? Because we're being reduced to one month. And people are sticking to that one month. But then, let's take it a little bit further. The same principle I was talking about earlier. We can remind the generation of children about their history that's found in the Old Testament. That where children didn't know who God was. And the reason why is because apparently they weren't told. In our text, Judges, 2nd chapter, verses 6 through 13. Judges. Second chapter, verses 6 through 13. And when Joshua had dismissed the people, the children of Israel went to each his own inheritance to possess the land. So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord which had been done for Israel. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died when he was 110 years old. And they buried him with the border, within the border of his inheritance at Timnah, his in the mountain of Ephraim, and in the north side of Mount Gesh. When all the generations had been gathered to their fathers, another generation rose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel. The children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served the babies. They forsook the Lord God of their fathers, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt, and they followed other gods, among the gods, the people who were all around them. And they bowed down to them, and they provoked the Lord to anger, and they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Akrites. So for a simple subject for today, we're going to call it, Do Your Children Know Your History? Do your children know your history? We're talking about your personal history. Our text, second chapter, verses 8 through 10, we can see Joshua dies. Um, all the people who personally seen God's glorious provisions, they, they are no longer there. 
Meaning there's some people here right now who can say they grew up when it was worse than what I saw. Mm -hmm. They saw, matter of fact, they seen it where you couldn't uh, even look at a lighter skinned woman mm -hmm. without being healed. Mm -hmm. They remember the times when people were being hung because of the skin color. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that generation, there's a lot of people now that are no longer here, so they can't tell that story anymore. Mm -hmm. But here, we say there's a people who knew, who've been delivered from Egypt. That's a sermon in there. It, it, we can call it, um, um, we don't look like what we've been through. Because if we took what history shows us, how our people were destroyed, beat down, killed, and look at us now, we have good jobs when you could do nothing but clean houses and pick cotton. But now, you can fix helicopters with a wrench. You can own businesses without the man coming down and taking it from you. So what I'm saying is, we take for granted the blessings that we've been given, and we don't share it to our children. Verse number 10, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel. So the next generation of elders didn't personally know, uh, the next generation after the elders, I should say, didn't personally know God. They had probably only read about God or heard about stories of God. That's nothing wrong with that. But what it's saying is they only had an intellectual knowledge of God. And that's all they had. There was no personal knowledge of who God was. Verse 11 through 13. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served babes. They forsook the Lord God for their fathers who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. Verse number 13. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and Akron. So verse number 14 lets us know the response of that God. So when we read the text, standing out on the outside looking in, knowing what they've been through, we can easily say, how in the world could they choose not to follow God? How could they forget God and what he had done for them? I'm here in the promised land, the inheritance because of God. How could they forget that? And sometimes you can ask yourself, because you know what I'm saying, you ain't raised like that. I know you remember how you was raised, but sometimes that had, how can our children, because my son can't understand, okay, I'm going to put it this way. There's some people who, when they see blacks and whites mixing, it's not that they're prejudiced. They say, boy, don't you know that girl? All she has to do is say, you touched her wrong, and you're in trouble. You know how many times my son heard that? Dad, why do they keep saying that? And they don't know that he don't know the history. So in his mind, why do these older people keep telling me this? I'm like, son, and then click. It's my fault for not informing him. They're saying what they've been through, and they don't know Son, let me <laughs> Come on in. We need to have a sit down so I can explain to you why they say it. Because if you don't know, the old people are talking crazy. Because you know there's a big disconnect from our older people to our younger people because there's almost like there's someone in the middle. So how could they do that? Well, honestly, the same way the generation forgot about God, it's the same way folks still don't know who God is and forget about God today. That's because we don't personally tell them our story and about God. I believe that it, it's the reason why the next generation that we read about in the text didn't know God personally and forgot about him. It's all the fault of the parents and the grandparents because they did not properly inform them about who God is. You can, tell, you can read all day long to someone. Run, spot, run. In, the, in our system here, they got a speed reading. But if they don't understand what they're reading, what are we doing? So I need to tell them who spot is and why spot run. Spot that dog up the street. They got a bigger dog after. That's why Spot be running. But just to read, run, Spot, run, that doesn't help him understand why Spot is running. And I'm running with Spot because that dog bigger than me too. But we have to say is give them an understanding of what they're reading. Because you sit there and talk about God till you blue in the face. But all you're doing is just telling me I have an intellectual knowledge, but not a personal knowledge. So, in order to ensure that the next generation of our children and our grandchildren understand who God is, that needs to be a personal responsibility upon us to teach our children and our grandchildren who God is. That's our job. Deuteronomy, fourth chapter, verse number nine.
Deuteronomy 4, chapter verse 9. I got to prove it. Just, I'm just going to touch on it, but now I got to read it. Only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. And do what with it? Teach them to your children and to your grandchildren. There's some things that you have seen and things that you know you need to teach your children and your grandchildren. Because my grandson, when I get a chance to him, I'm going to talk to him about things that I know his mother don't know. That's what God held his people to do. He said, you know, I want you to teach him about why did they have the Passover? To remind them about how God delivered them. So if you just keep reading on the Passover, and every Sunday you come in and just read on Passover, oh, that's not supposed to take the juice and the crackers. But you don't have an understanding of what the purpose is behind the juice and the crackers. It just becomes an hors d'oeuvre. And not something that we take in our mind and our heart and say, oh, that's what Jesus did for me. But we have to teach them. Deuteronomy 6, chapter verse 4 through 7. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk to them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. He's saying, tell them every time you get a chance how good God is. But how many of us actually say that that's true? Deuteronomy 11 chapter, Deuteronomy 11 verses 18 and 19 says the same thing. You don't have to turn it. It's almost identical. Deuteronomy 11 chapter verses 18 and 19. So what I want you to see is God gives an assignment to the parent as after loving God with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his mind is to that you teach it to his children, to your children and the grandchildren as well. It's our job to teach our children who God is. Now, you know where I'm going with this, with the teachers of black history thing. So, now this, you know, I told you the setup. So, you need to understand that God wants us, because our children, you can bring the church all day long and drop them off. Mm -hmm. So, what? You got a babysitter. That's pretty much what you did. Just sit them off in the back, give them some cooking, some cream, turn the TV on, they are. But how can they know who God is? Is when they, they hear about God at church and they're hanging out with the devil when they get to the house. Okay, let me just move on. That ain't part of the lesson. So, God's design, that's not my fault, for the preservation of historical and cultural revelation about him is through the family. If God wants other people to know who he is, it's through the family. And since I know some of y'all missed Sunday school this morning that talking about Joseph Mace, uh, we talked about family this morning. We are family. So the only way for someone to know who God is you, if you want to, matter of fact, if you want to know about somebody, come to the family. Is that, is that, is that Uncle Robert? Are you really crazy? Well, come to the family and find out. If you want to know about somebody that's in the family, come find out. Yeah, he's crazy. He really is crazy. Yes, he's crazy. And he told you he was crazy. So the point is, if you want to know about somebody, God said, you want to know about me? Go to the family. Joel 1st chapter, verse number 3, says it better. Tell your children about it. Let your children tell their children and their children another generation. So God wants you to know, let it be known through the generations. Tell people about God and who God is by the family. So if we understand that, and notice where I'm going with this, when you read Hosea 4, chapter verse number 6, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. When people don't know who God is, when something bad happens, they blame him. Because they don't understand. That's not how, see, if God loved me, he wouldn't let this happen. We got to teach him about who God is and how God works. Mm -hmm. right. But if you know God, he just stand up the back. Him and Satan, they, they make jokes with y'all. They, they plan with y'all. See, Satan do something, God said, no, you can do this. It seems like a game. But if you don't understand who God is, and that ain't how it works. Because the Satan will get you deceived and have you mad and discouraged with God. Amen. And God ain't done nothing but love you anyway. Because you won't see the big picture. Well, I should have been dead. Not the fact that all this stuff happened. Why didn't I die? Why am I still here? So the question is, do your children know your history? I'll ask um, uh, Gibson. You got grandchildren. Does your grandchildren know about your mom's history? Just something to think about. 
Because if she can't tell it, you ought to. How can we continue on the family tradition if we don't tell the family tradition? I didn't tell family business. Y'all know we talk about that in Sunday school this morning too. But there's some traditions in the family that people need to know. This is what your great granny had to go through. Huh? Because if you can say, a granny when she was down here, because at that time I heard that they walked barefoot in the mud mm -hmm. to Adam Street. That blows my mind. I just, I'm trying to tell you. But no one would know because I can't imagine there not being a street mm -hmm. to Adam Street. Mm -hmm. But because of the history, wow. So you mean Tampa Preacher used to get paid with chicken and <laughs> mashed potatoes? Yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't make sense until someone said something. This is how it used to be. So the preacher now who gets a little cut the dollar, hey, I ain't paying him enough. Well, let me remind you how it used to be. People won't appreciate it if they don't know where they came from. So in order for our children and our children not to get and fully understand their history, it's important to American history, they must see it and know it through us first. If we don't know our history, then how can we tell somebody else about that? We can't tell my children anything because we expect the school system to teach them. Have any of y'all ever stopped and took time out to look at the black history book? Did you get a section. You didn't get a full chapter. Enterprise books don't give you a full chapter. They give you a section. And I was like, oh, that's all they gave you? Oh, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> you just make sure you make an air on that. <laughs> but the thing is, it's about understanding that we can't expect society and our school teachers to teach our children about our history. When we need to pick up our books and read about our history so we can make sure our history continues to be history. Because if we just confine it to February, from March all the way through January, we ain't supposed to bring it up. But I mean, so y'all want y'all to see why, again, I don't have a problem with it. It's just I don't like it. It's because of what it actually teaches. But when we're teaching Black History Month, I've talked about all how the good things is, but do y'all remember when we talked about the monkey wrench? How sometimes we need to tell the bad side of things too. Amen. Our children would never understand what it means to be hosed down. In my dream years, you drank out of a hose. That's all we knew. My people were hosed down. Dogs are something you pet. The people above me were dogs that were beating on them and my fact, biting on them and chewing on them. Billy clubs were something you took two things together and made our fake nun church and watch karate movies. People above me were being beat with those things. So, I mean, do y'all see what I'm saying? So sometimes we, if we don't tell it, they'll never understand it and they'll take for granted how good they have it. Our children will never understand. When you go to Nashville, you see the sign that says, this way to Jack Daniels' place. But does anybody remember the city that Jack Daniels is in? Lynchburg, Tennessee. This is where the man who created lynching, they, they named a city after him. So what I'm saying is, but, oh, man, I went up that taste and some of the stuff you had to, but do you remember, do you know the history behind it? I know ain't none of y'all did that before, but I'm just letting you know, I went through that area and stopped by back in the day. So there's some things that you have to tell it, not recently. They're like, y'all check this thing. But I want you to see is that there's some things that if we don't tell the bad, because everybody loves telling the good, but there's some bad stuff that we have to tell as well. Because when God delivered you from some stuff, they need to know God is good, but how and why is he good? Because sometimes you have to tell on yourself and tell how bad it was. Yes. And then say, wait a minute, I got, Daddy, you used to do that, son, I told you. You used to go to uh, those frequent, those places that opened between 9 and ended about 3.30 in the afternoon. I'm sorry, the morning, next morning. Yes, sir. But, Daddy, you know they were shooting them at the road. Yeah. It was there every Saturday. Somebody understand that to me. Y'all see what I'm saying? Don't y'all don't, don't name one of you say you went there. But you see them looks like you mean on the road so and so? Yeah. But what I'm saying is I show them that this is why. This is why you don't, this is why we go to the club. Look at this, the reason why. This is what happened. This is the atmosphere. As soon as that boy that was with T.I. got killed in the same place, he said, now I understand. Now that years have went by since I it went inside of an established place like as such. But it took something like that for people who he know, look what happened. Now I get it. So when he goes off to Texas, he's in college, I can't stop him from doing what he want to do. But what I taught him, by history, no, oh, I don't need to go there, and he doesn't go. See, that's why sometimes we have to let our children know, we ain't always been Christians. But we can let them know because of this, this is what we have to deal with. So when people understand how important God is to us, 
our children understand how important God is to us, then God will become important to them. Mm -hmm. So the same thing, if we show them how important our history is to us, our history will then become important to them. So if all you do is just celebrate in February and read them, well, you know what, we're going to post up some stuff on the Book of Faith, Soon as February the 28th stop, you'll never post none of that stuff again. Well, really, what good is it? So, I'm inclined to believe that the next generation does not know intellectually, um, emotionally, culturally, and historically the struggles, the pain, the sorrow, the sweat, uh, the violence, the marches. People don't understand, they're talking about when well, you march, oh, y'all just marched to Washington, D.C. You think everybody rode the bus? No, brother, they marched. But they don't understand that. So that little thing that's, what's up, that little city that's, um, um, that the president went to, what was the one that's in um, Alabama? Yeah. Yeah. Ask one of their young folk what, what Shell was known for. <laughs> they don't know. And that's on us for not telling them. This is why President Obama went there. Oh, and then you see they didn't want to even do much coverage on it either, really that long, moving long. But just to say that sometimes if you don't tell your children the history, and you got people that live in Selma that don't even understand the history behind Selma. So we're going to bring it to a close by saying something, something very simple. The joy you felt when you found out, you saw it on TV, you saw it for yourself, the 44th president of the United States. You remember the joy that you had? I mean, there's some people who, they were so overjoyed, tears kept coming down their face. Because there were some people who said, I never thought I would live to see this day. Our children can't understand why they're crying. Because we haven't told them the struggle that it took to get from there to there. So if we understand that we can, once we tell them, oh, they get it, but then tell them how the struggle was from how God delivered us. Yeah, he's the president, but it's because of God yes. that our people survive. Because I'll say, do you not understand the reason why you're here? It's because God covered your parents. Mm -hmm. Through all the stuff that was going on, he covered your parents. So you are still here today. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't pay attention sometimes to the simple thing of why are you still here? Because there's a story that you have to tell. So there's some significant historical events that you have seen for yourself. Why is it that when it comes down to Black History Month, we just condemn it, condemn it, condemn it. <laughs> Thank you, condense it. Lord, I'm doing all these condoms to one month. So what I'm saying is, it's not that I have a problem with it. I just have a problem with us accepting that it's just one month. And again, if we got 30 days, I would might even okay. Got 28 days in a cold month. That's all I'm saying. If you're in Alabama, everywhere else is cold. Because you see, I'm sweating now. So I'm going to take this jacket off. It's not going to go. But that same joy that you expressed when your president became, you saw the very first black president. You got the chance to vote for it. You saw it. Do you have that same joy when you talk about God? That's what I'm trying to say. Does that same joy deep down in your soul get so far where you start crying because you're so joyful of how good? Matter of fact, what that old saying is, God has brought me from a mighty, no mighty, mighty, no oh yeah, mighty and mighty and oh, mighty, mighty, long way. So some of us got a whole bunch of mighties behind them. But do you have that same smile? Do you tell your child how good God is and your child like, What's wrong with you? Every time you talk about God, yeah, you're right. happy. Amen. Right. How you doing? I don't know how I'm going to make it. Then you ain't talking about God that I know. <laughs> so Y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. The history. So when I say the, the lesson is, do your children know your history? Stop and think about from the time that you were born, all the times that you know of, that Satan came by and knocked on your door, came to your house, or tried to take your life. But you're still here. Amen. Now, you ain't got to think about the times that you don't know. Mm -hmm. But just think about the times you do know. You should be telling your children about their history. This is why I don't do what I used to do anymore. Because when you tell your children how you got over, they'll say, wait a minute, so you, that's 
what do you mean by God is good? Because you can tell them, but they got to understand it for themselves. So, in order for your children and your children's children and your children's children not to forget about God, not to be unaware about God, there's some things that simply you have to do. And I would just say, I was trying to condense it this way. I said condense it. I said it right. Okay. <laughs> remember. Remember, always reflect, recall, and remember about your history about God. Remember. Second R, remind, which is to always repeat, reiterate, reiterate, and remind your children and your children's children about your history with God. So this is something that you don't have to just do on Sunday. And last, it's something simple it's called recapitulate. I just like using that word because it's more than five words, but it simply means to summarize. You know you always get that one person that wants to tell the whole story, and you be like, oh, I'll be glad when she was called. Yes, ma'am. You can't be disrespectful to Granny because she's still talking, but you want her to summarize. Just give me the point. That's just basically saying, give the main points of an event. The who, the what, the when, the where, and the how. And if you put it all together, oh, so sometimes, yeah, you do need the long story. You know, I'm about 10 minutes later talking about, to make a long story short. Oh, <laughs> But you need to be able to recapitulate how you obeyed the gospel. You need to be able to let them know how you became a child of God. I keep bringing this up every week. 1 Peter 3rd chapter, verse number 15. Yeah, 1 Peter 3rd chapter, verse number 15. Be ready to always give an answer to every man that asks you the reason of hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Are you talking about how you obeyed the gospel with joy? Are you talking about it with such remembrance that I can tell you exactly what, matter of fact, I can tell you what day it was. I can tell you what pants I was wearing. And I can even tell you the shirt that I was wearing when I finally obeyed the gospel. How many people can sit back and say they remember? I had just came from my Bible study in my congregation on way back when, that Tuesday. Wednesday night, I'm there, exactly what I needed to hear. There it was. And I remember that yellow shirt. And the thing is, it had a hole in it. I don't know why I wore it, but anyway. I remember wearing it and walking down the aisle before I realized I was on the second row. And I remember Brother Rod said, you you going to get the water? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean get in the water? I mean, I'm thinking, what are you talking about? I can't be baptized. But he said get in the water. That didn't make sense to me at that moment. And he, brother, brother Glasgow asking me, um, you going to be baptized? Yeah, I remember. I was like, yeah. And he asked me all those questions. I was like, okay, see you Sunday. No, what are you going? We get baptized right now. I said, we don't have baptism on Sunday? He said, oh, no. I ain't got no clothes, man. I just... I didn't understand, but next thing I remember, that water was cold. April 22nd, 1993, that water was C-O-L-D. That's why they sound to fill my body, not my soul, or whatever that means. Yeah, it was cold. So I can tell people why I was baptized, and I don't mind telling them. And when you do so, first, you let your children know that the Lord's Day is not just one day, it's every day. Second, it lets you know, let your children know that Black History Month is not confined to one month in February. It's every day, every month. You can talk about your history. Your black history, I'm going to say it like this. Black history is American history. Take the blacks out of history. American history, that things that have never occurred. Things that could not even be here. Matter of fact, LaPonson told me today about that cotton he picked. Well, actually, he sucked his sisters yeah. in the door. No, I'm sorry, one sister picked at the toes or whatever it is, got out of it. But think about it. Take away the person who invented the reasons for the peanut. Look how many things that would not be invented. Think about it. Take away the dude that made the light bulb, make it last longer. That things without blacks in it, the history would be no good. So black history is American history. And they teach American history as a course. And why is that not included in the course? So it's good to have a separate thing, but understand, we're the only ones with a separate day besides the other people. They got two, September and October. That's all I'm saying. And we got the shortest, and they got the long. So, we can make sure one thing, the day of judgment, 
is not going to be based on our black history. So it's good to know, but that's not going to save you in the end. You need to have history about your history with God. That's what we're going to be judged on. Second what? Second Corinthians 5, chapter verse number 10. You're going to be judged according to what we have done, whether it be good or bad. Romans 8, chapter verse number 1 tells us, though, there is no longer any condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So if you are in Christ Jesus, your history ain't going to make a difference. Your bad history, because Jesus wipes it clean. The blood and the baptism of water gets in it, and it wipes the slate clean. So all the only thing you have now is a history of you being with God. That you are now a part of Christ. And when you're part of Christ, everything else. Because now when I do mess up, I can ask forgiveness of my sin. So in order to be even in a position to call heaven your home, you have to be in Christ. You have to get into Christ by baptism. We already know that that's the end result. But you have to believe that Jesus Christ actually came down to save our souls. Confess that he is the son of God, repent of your sins, and then get baptized for the remission of our sins. And if you're one of those people who are here, and you haven't been living right, you already know. There's nothing I have to tell you other than start living right for Christ now. So if anyone needs to respond to the invitation, we do so as we stand and sing a verse of our invitation song. Your grace and mercy.